Hello, Marissa here with elementaryschoolcounseling.org, a place where school counselors can go to find the resources and support they need to run effective school counseling programs. Welcome to our eighth video podcast called Hollywood and Beyond. I was recently watching a show on MTV called Awkward. I don't know if you've heard of it. Um, on the show, they have a character called Valerie, and she is the guidance counselor at the high school. Um, beyond just my issues with her title of guidance counselor, I have some other issues with this character. Um, I do find her exceptionally hilarious. I love watching the scenes that she's in, but she is um, completely inappropriate. Um, she gives horrible advice to her students, and she does not maintain boundaries with them. She would talk about her own relationship status with her students, um, actually make fun of them um, to their face, um, especially when they're in really difficult situations and they really need help. Um, I get that it's fiction, it's part of the show, it's what makes the show funny, um, but I noticed that in Hollywood, whether it's in movies or television shows, um, they often portray counselors, especially school counselors, as being quirky, but not in a good way. Um, basically, they're not good at their jobs, and I don't even know how they have their jobs still. Um, and you're usually the comic relief um, for many shows. And so, I was thinking about what that means. I know when I was in grad school, we had to do a project where we watched a movie and we had to analyze the counseling theories that that particular counselor was using in their practice. And it was really hard to find any um, movies that showed good counselors. Um, and I think that really affects us as a profession. We have people who have horrible ideas of what counseling actually is. And when someone suggests, hey, have you ever thought about going to counseling, they have these images in their head of what they see on television. And imagine, you know, someone sitting there and they're lying on a couch and they're saying, you know, how does that make you feel? Or going to a school counselor and they basically don't listen to anything that you have to say. Um, another example that, I, you know, is coming to the top of my head, um, Easy A, the, uh, Lisa Kudrow plays um, the school counselor there. And there's one point where her student really is trying to open up to her and talk to her, and she just is throwing um, condoms. You have to kind of watch the movie to <laughs> know what I'm talking about. But she's throwing them at her and saying, okay, move on. I have another student to see. And so I think the more that that's out there, the more that people will believe that that's how things actually are. And so I think it's really important that we advocate for ourselves and really educate people on what we do. Um, especially at the elementary level, I feel like people have a better idea of what high school counselors do because maybe they're older and they remember their own high school counselors or there just are more of them. I know when I um, was growing up, we did have a counselor at our elementary school, but their job was different. And so we're kind of recreating this field of how things actually look. Um, so I wanted to give you some ideas of how I do things, um, how I spread um, information about what I do to my students, to my parents, to my staff, um, and maybe that can be some things that will help you in your own practice. There are a few things that I do for my students that seem like the, that have the biggest impact or the most important things. Um, one is during the first week or two of the school year, I go into every classroom and introduce or reintroduce myself to them. Um, it could be something simple like I bring in a toolbox with different objects and um, that helps explain what I do at the, at the school. So for example, I would have a red paper heart with a band-aid on it. And for the younger students, I might say, well, why would you need a band-aid? Okay, because you're getting hurt. Okay, so what if your heart hurts? What do you do? Well, I'm somebody that you can talk to if something is bothering you. And then you can kind of adjust it for older students by making it more of a challenge where they have to guess what it stands for. Um, and usually these lessons are about 15 minutes, sometimes a little bit longer, but it's really just a fun way to say, remember me, I'm your school counselor, here's what I do, and here's how you can see me if you need it. Um, and just kind of reminding them. Um, I also do something called Counselor Mail, which is a Promising Practice Award winner through the Character Education Partnership. 
Um, I write a letter to each student twice a year. So I have a pretty small school. It's 350 students. That's 700 letters. But most of you do not have schools bigger than 700. So you could write one letter to every student. Um, I try to do it where it's one letter per week um, per classroom. So every student um, or every classroom will have a student who gets counselor mail for that week. Um, and I write something specific about them, something that I notice or something their teacher has kind of let me know about. So that helps me get to know every single student by name and also know something special about them. And um, this helps when I'm in the hallway and I'm really connecting with, with the students and saying their names. People notice. Um, the kids, you know, in the hallway in the morning will come up to me and say, do you really know everybody in this school? Yeah, I do. I really do know everybody. Wow, that's really cool. And then it kind of lets them know that it is possible for somebody to do that and that that I really do care about them and that they can get to know other people too, not just the people in their class. They can get to know everyone. Um, so that's just a couple of, of the things that I do with my students to really promote myself and let them know that I'm there for them. For my staff, um, I have a few things that I do. Um, at the beginning of the year, I like to remind them, just like I do the students, of who I am and what I do. And um, because every year is different and every situation is different with, you know, some, some years you have really difficult behaviors um, that are more defiant. Other years you have more um, sneaky kind of behaviors. So you use me differently every single year. So you need a reminder of what I have to offer. And so that way, when the year starts, they know exactly what to do if they need a student who needs individual counseling, they want to have a small group, a classroom lesson, um, they're ready to go. I give them a menu of options so that they don't have to come up with the topics on their own. They can look through the menu and see what I have to offer. I also leave it open where if they want to custom order something, they can because there are tons of situations that I don't have on there. It's, it's more the basics and then if there's something specific that they want me to work on with their students, I can be part of that. Um, and I also do something, um, I have a monthly newsletter that I send out to just my staff and it's four pages and it highlights things that are going on in the school or things that I'm doing, what's available service-wise, and then also I have a book list that coincides with our core value of the month, so it's about 10 books that they can use, a variety of um, age groups, um, and it's things that they can use in their own classroom. I typically pick books that I have in my own collection, plus the books that are in the library at our building, to make it a little easier, so that if there's something they need really quickly to coincide with the core value, they can you know borrow it from me, borrow it from our school library. Um, and the staff seems to enjoy it. And I also highlight a website of the month um, in my newsletter, newsletter which now um, coincides with the website of the month that I have on my own website. So that makes it really easy for me and takes a lot of the work out of it. Um, once you have the format, it's pretty easy to just type in new information. Um, I've been doing it since I started, so I've had three years worth of newsletters. If you need help or ideas, you can go onto my website and look at some of the samples. I only put the ones up that don't have student pictures in them. Um, so I have, you know, an even bigger collection than what I've shown on the website. Um, but it can give you, you know, at least some basic information. For parents, I like to be as involved as possible. Um, I found that uh, this year in particular, I've really tried to be more um, engaged with my parents and calling them more, emailing them more, um, however they prefer me to contact them, just so that they are staying updated with my work with their child. Um, before, I, I focused so much on the child in the school environment that I, not completely neglected, but I didn't really think about it as much, but now, as I've had a little bit more experience, you realize, well, you can do everything you want at school, but if they go home in an environment where your lessons and your um, goals are not being um, met because the parents don't know about it, then it's really not going to do anything. You're kind of undoing all the work um, that you've, you know, really spent a lot of time on. So keeping parents informed is, is great because they can be your greatest allies. Um, so I, like I said, email 
call, however, just to give them some updates and, and let them know that they can call me um, whenever they need. Um, I also have an article that goes home in our school newsletter um, each month, and that gives some really good educational information plus a reminder of how to get in contact with me if they need to. Um, I've had after-school programs for parents. Um, those are usually, in my district, They it's hard to get parents to come, especially if, if you can't afford the child care or the food options. Um, but you, you know, do as much as you can, um, you know, with what you've got and, you know, always posting things on a website too to allow everybody to have the information. Um, at least you feel like you're, you know, you're helping the parents that did come and then everybody else can have the information if they want it. I also make a point to go to our evening programs like talent show, musical programs, ice cream social, um, family game night, things like that because parents love um, to meet the, the face for the, the name that they're hearing at home. Um, and they're so much more likely to be on your side if they really know you as a person rather than just this, you know, this na uh, faceless name that they're hearing about. So in the end, I think school counselors, counselors in general, have a few hurdles um, when it comes to getting the heart of who we are as professionals out there to the public. Um, we have to really work hard to let our students, our staff, and our parents, communities, fellow school counselors know um, what we do, and that's through data, that's through the feedback that we get. Um, I think um, we need to work really hard to show how valuable we are, um, because right now we're fighting against a lot of the images that are being shown in Hollywood um, for you know what our profession is. So. Um, you know, definitely take the time to show people what you're doing. I think um, it's the best thing you can do for yourself, but also for our profession. Um, I really appreciate all the work that I'm seeing um, from the school counselors that I know through their blogs and websites. Um, I feel so enthusiastic about my profession and so proud to be a school counselor when I look around and see all the wonderful things that my colleagues are doing. Um, I really think, um, you know, we could change the world. I know that might be naive. Um, as a, you know, a young professional, I know a lot of edu you know, educators go into this profession thinking that they're going to change the world. And I think we can do that one child at a time. I, um, I know it can be a very stressful um, profession. You sometimes are not thanked for all the work that you do. Some days are really difficult. Um, where you feel like you're not getting anywhere with a child. Um, but I think remembering that everything we do, um, you know, we, we give our hearts um, to the people that we work with. And um, it's, uh, even though some, sometimes people don't thank us for it, it's appreciated. So never forget that. I appreciate you, and I know your students and staff and parents also appreciate you too. Um, thank you again for watching this video podcast. I love making these for you and sharing ideas. Um, and if there's anything in particular that you really want to see, definitely let me know. You can contact me on my contact page just by filling out the form. And you can also connect with me on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. So um, definitely keep in touch, and um, I hope you have a great rest of your summer. Thanks.